putting in a virtual reality 300 degree shooting simulator for the police and military in the community in the outlying area. What we also plan on doing is making the space available for NRA instruction classes as well. So how did this get started? It's just, um, it came out of a need of watching the news and what has been taking place in our community in so far as the, uh, the unfortunate incidences with the community, with the police, and some shootings that has taken place. And what I was just sitting thinking, along with a few members of the team, that is there another way that we can incre increase the uh, police training through a community-based effort? And so the whole concept of virtual came. And that's what we're going to put in, and we're offering it to all of the police um, municipalities in the outlying area. So is this something you came up with yourself? This is something that we've been working with for several years now, but yes, um, out of the brainchild, out of this brainchild, yes, um, because we're a firearm instructor already, and we work with the municipalities already. So what we've decided to do, how can we, as members of the firearm community that are just uh, civilian? What contributions can we make? And what we came up with is a way to figure out how we can save the community money through liability and insurance and things like that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, typically, and I have to tell you, but typically, you know, police partners have their own firing ranges and yes. so on and so forth. Yes. Um, so how does, this, how does this necessarily save money? We're actually, in so far as what we're planning on, is more than just the shooting range. We'll be offering about 189 different scenarios that police and military will experience. And it will enhance their ability to react and when to react and when not to react, which will, hmm, in the long run, prevent what took place in Hamden and up in Yale. I think better police training would have been necessary in that particular case. Mm -hmm. And I'm not... Um, but how about even weather's... Well, all of that yeah. one as well. So, so what I'm saying, it has um, healing properties, what we're trying to do, and we're going to offer it exclusively to all the municipalities in the outlying area so that they can come and test their metal because most of the ranges and police precincts in our state don't offer virtual reality training. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, are there many others in the state that you know of? Um, no, not on the level at which we plan on doing it outside of the state police department, on outside of the Connecticut State Police, no one. No one in the tri-state area has it, what we plan on doing. And again, we want to be inclusive, so we're going to be inviting um, municipalities from Jersey, from Westchester County. All of the municipalities are welcome to um train here in Connecticut. And what we also want to offer is the New York City Police Department as well. Their officers can come on their own. They don't necessarily have to come through the budget of their precinct. They can just arbitrarily choose to come and schedule time to come and train. So it'll be um, available for individual training as well. So you said Stanford Police is already on board. What, what, what are they saying? Um, Stanford Police likes the idea because um, you, you will be doing talking to Rich soon. Um, the, the whole idea about what we plan on offering here in so far as the NRA piece, he likes the concept of the training that's going to take place from the classroom to the simulated gun range to the actual gun range. So what we've done was fill the gap and really prepared students for first-time shooters who will be taking NRA classes, who really never handled a firearm in their lives, but they want to get the gun. This facility will also offer that preparatory training prior to live fire training. So this is really revolutionary for the state. I think um, on, a, on, on a great many levels, and, and it has so much potential to grow in so far as expanding the programs on as scenarios uh, arise in society, because you know we're, we're fluid. And so with the ever-changing situations, we can uh, update our simulator to reflect some of the newer nuances that the enemy of the state will be implementing in so far as terrorism and so on and so forth. All right. I think you nailed it. Uh, um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. You want to do a few shots? A few. I mean, you're going to get a couple of shots from here. Yeah. Okay. We want to give um, like show and vision 
Okay, so the whole um, idea is, um, um, is we are showing vision. What do, so when you see here, we want you to see what's going to take place. So when you, you're here now, when you come back, you're not going to recognize this reality. Oh, so when, now when, oh, you can stand right there where you are. So when, when do you hope this is going to be completed by? Well, I'll be sitting down talking to Alex in reference to when they're going to do their demo. I already have my architect in place, and we already have the um, architectural plan already ready. So it's just a matter of when he does his work, we're ready. So we're looking, um, I want to be done by the end of this fiscal year, November, December. We want to open 2020. So, um, and, and again, it's just, we've already talked to the state. We're not um, under any restrictions from uh, the Alcohol Bureau of Firearms. We're not under any restrictions from the state. What we're trying to do is not sanction or um, scrutinize by the state. It's not even scrutinized by the city. Okay, so we're not outside of the realm of anything illegal so far as firearms and being able because we won't be handling any live fire. Mm -hmm. So um, we're ready to roll. We're, we're, we're ready to roll. We're just trying to get um, um, to garner more um, support and let the community know what's coming and how um, civilians, rather than protesting and marching and downing the police department, how can we figure out how come we have a symbiotic relationship together rather than beating on, I'm pro-police. I'm on the list. I'm waiting to be called. Mm -hmm. So I'm pro-police. All of my friends and family are pro-police. So I am not anti-police by any means. And I want that to be known. I'm on the list to be on the police department, okay? So I would like to try to come together and figure out how we can come together make our communities better, make the trust better between the community and the officers as well. So I think this is a pregnant moment in history, especially for us in this particular area of Connecticut. And I'm just asking that you show vision and help me put the message out. This is, again, this is something positive. This is something good. And so far, safe training, we're even trying to implement something for the youth, meaning mm -hmm. there are 15 Olympic competitions that most people don't know about. And very few people are taking advantage of the competition, ski, air rifle, air pistol, so on and so forth. They don't know about the scholarships that are offered, shooting scholarships. We wanna make that available to various um, members and youth of the community as well. So there are great many opportunities we can take advantage of by putting this thing here together. And this was an old gym, right? This was an old gym. And, um, and, and, and I think the long-term picture, you got to see past this here. you got to be able to see 10,000 pennies. You see one penny, mm -hmm. but can you see 10,000? And if you can see 10,000 pennies, you are going to see something magnificent here in this community. This is going to be amazing. Nice. All right, man. Yeah. Cool. Let me grab this. And you just need a few shots, right? Oh, okay. Just a couple shots in this room. All right. The old, the old fool that's uh, 